Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Today Jeremiah 34 through 36 and we have been looking at Jeremiah buying a plot of land and also more about God's promise of redemption. So today we are going to be looking at God's promise specifically to King Zedekiah. Uh, we'll also see God's stance on slavery. More of that. Uh, we'll be seeing the Rechabites. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, we will be seeing Jehoiakim and him burning Jeremiah's scroll. More importantly, him burning God's word. So we'll take a look at that again in 34 through 36. So chapter 34. While Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms and peoples in the empire he ruled were fighting against Jerusalem and all its surrounding towns, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Go to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and tell him, This is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will burn it down. You will not escape from his grasp, but will surely be captured and handed over to him. You will see the king of Babylon with your own eyes, and he will speak with you face to face, and you will go to Babylon. Yet, hear the promise of the Lord, O Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord says concerning you. You will not die by the sword. You will die peacefully. As people made a funeral fire in honor of your fathers, the former kings who preceded you, so they will make a fire in your honor and lament, Alas, O master, I myself make this promise, declares the Lord. Then Jeremiah the prophet told all this to Zedekiah king of Judah in Jerusalem, while the army of the king of Babylon was fighting against Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah that were still holding out, Lachish and Azekah. These were the only fortified cities left in Judah. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after King Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem to proclaim freedom for the slaves. Everyone was to free his Hebrew slaves, both male and female. No one was to hold a fellow Jew in bondage. So all the officials and the people who entered into this covenant agreed that they would free their male and female slaves and no longer hold them in bondage. They agreed and set them free. But afterward, they changed their minds and took back the slaves they had freed and enslaved them again. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I made a covenant with your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And I said, every seventh year, each of you must free any fellow Hebrew who, you sold, himself, who sold himself to you. After he has served you six years, you must let him go free. Your fathers, however, did not listen to me or pay attention to me. Recently, you repented and did what was right in my sight. Each of you proclaimed freedom to his countrymen. You even made a covenant before me in the house that bears my name, but now you have turned around and profaned my name. Each of you has taken back the male and female slaves you had set free to go where they wished. You have forced them to become your slaves again. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You have not obeyed me. You have not proclaimed freedom for your fellow countrymen. So now I proclaim freedom for you, declares the Lord. Freedom to fall by the sword, plague, and famine. I will make you abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth, the men who have violated my covenant and have not fulfilled the terms of the covenant they made before me. I will treat like the calf they cut in two pieces and walked in between the pieces. The leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the court officials and the priests, and all the people of the land who walked between the pieces of the calf, I will hand over to their enemies who seek their lives. Their dead bodies will become food for the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. I will hand Zedekiah king of Judah and his officials over to the enemies who seek their lives, to the army of the king of Babylon, which has withdrawn from you. <clears throat> I am going to give the order, declares the Lord, and I will take and I will bring them back to this city. They will fight against it and burn it down, and I will lay waste the towns of Judah so that no one can live there. Chapter 35. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the reign of Jehoiakim, son of jo Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the Rechabite family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. So I went to Jazaniah, son of Jeremiah, the son of Hasabaniah, and his brothers and all his sons, the whole family of the Rechabites. I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the room of the sons of Hanan, son of Igladah, the man of God. It was next to the room of the officials, which was over the Manas Masaiah, son of Shalom, the doorkeeper. Then I set bowls full of wine and some cups before the men of the Rechabite family and said to them, 
drink some wine. <clears throat> but they replied, we do not drink wine because our forefather, Jonadab, son of Rechab, gave us this command. Neither you nor your descendants must ever drink wine. Also, you must never build houses, sow seed, or plant vineyards. You must never have any of these things, but must always live in tents. Then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads. We have obeyed everything our forefather, Jonadab, son of Rechab, commanded us. Neither we nor our wives nor our sons and daughters have ever drunk wine or built houses to live in or had vineyards, fields, or crops. We have lived in tents and have fully obeyed everything our forefather, Jonadab, commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we said, Come, we must go to Jerusalem to escape the Babylonian and Armenian armies. So we have remained in Jerusalem. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Go and tell the men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem, Will you not learn a lesson and obey my words, declares the Lord. Jonadab, son of Rechab, ordered his sons not to drink wine, and this command has been kept. To this day they do not drink wine because they obey their forefather's command. But I have spoken to you again and again, yet you have not obeyed me. Again and again I have sent my servants and prophets to you. They said each of you must turn from your wicked ways and reform your actions. Do not follow other gods to serve them. Then you will live in the land I have given you and your fathers. But you have not paid attention or listened to me. The descendants of Jonadab, son of Rechab, have carried out the command their forefathers gave them, but these people have not obeyed me. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Listen, I'm going to bring on Judah and on everyone living in Jerusalem every disaster I pronounced against them. I spoke to them, but they did not listen. I called to them, but they did not answer. Then Jeremiah said to the family of the Rechabites, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, you have obeyed the command of your forefather Jonadab and have followed all his instructions and have done everything he ordered. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Jonadab, son of Rechab, will never fail to have a man to serve me. Chapter 36. <clears throat> In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, each of them will turn from his wicked ways. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. <clears throat> so Jeremiah called Baruch son of Neriah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words of the Lord had spoken to him, Baruch wrote them on the scroll. Then Jeremiah told Baruch, I am restricted. I cannot go to the Lord's temple. So you go to the house of the Lord on a day of, fa of fasting and read it to the people from the scroll, the words of the Lord that you wrote as I dictated. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from the towns. Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord and each will turn from his wicked ways for the anger and wrath pronounced against this people by the Lord are great. Baruch, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. At the Lord's temple, he read the words of the Lord from the scroll. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, a time of fasting before the Lord was proclaimed for all the people of Jerusalem and for those who had come from the towns of Judah. From the room of Gomorrah, son of Shaphan, the secretary, which was in the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple, Baruch read to all the people of the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words from the Lord's scroll, he went down to the secretary's room in the royal palace, where all the officials were sitting, Elishama, the secretary, Dedaliah, the son of Shemamiah, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Gemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. After Micaiah told them everything that he had heard Baruch read to the people from the scroll, all the officials sent Jehudi, son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalamiah, the son of Cushi, to say to Baruch, Bring the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Baruch, son of Neriah, went with them and went with them to... Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> son of Neriah went to them with the scroll in his hand. He said to them, Sit down, please, and read it to us. So Baruch read it to them. When they had heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to Baruch, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Baruch, Tell us, 
How did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Baruch replied. He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the official said to Baruch, You and Jeremiah, go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishama, the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and Jehudi brought it from the room of Elishama, the secretary, and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter apartment, with a fire burning in the fire pot in front of him. Whenever Jehudi had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot until the entire scroll was burned in the fire. The king and all his attendants who heard all these words showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes, even though Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll. He would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jeremiel, the son of king, Sariah, son of Azariel, and Shalemiah, the son of Abedil, to arrest Baruch the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord had hidden them. After the king burned the scroll containing the words that Baruch had written, at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, Take another scroll and write on it all the words that were on the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned up. Also, tell Jehoiakim, king of Judah, this is what the Lord says. You burn that scroll that said, Why did you write on it that the king of Babylon would certainly come and destroy this land and cut off both men and animals from it? Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. His body will be thrown out and exposed to the heat by day and the frost by night. I will punish him and his children and his, and his attendants for their wickedness. I will bring on them and those living in Jerusalem and the people of Judah every disaster I pronounced against them because they have not listened. So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe Baruch, son of Neriah, as Jeremiah dictated. Baruch wrote on it all the words of the scroll that Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire, and many similar words were added to them. I think that's part of my prayer for you today, Rayleigh, is that you have a proper fear of the Lord. And that fear can mean a couple things. It definitely does mean respect. But I think there's an element of fear in there. Absolutely, right? We should definitely love God. That goes without saying. But I think a fear is a recognition of how far God is above us. And I think a lot of people miss the fear of the Lord today. A lot of people do. But there's something that people are so quick to jump on their high horses. And I think that's particularly dangerous. I mean, we see a bit here uh, speaking about slavery. And that's really interesting because people tend to jump on the Bible and say, oh, the Bible promotes slavery. And there are a couple things that are interesting with that. But I think one of them that's really interesting is people could also make the case, oh, the Bible promotes divorce. I mean, Moses said it was okay. That's in the Old Testament. You can find that. And yet, when we look we see that the people didn't even abide by God's plans for slavery. So God gave them a, a standard for slavery and a standard that we would look at today and say, oh, well, yeah, people can free their peers, but why didn't they free or not take any slaves whatsoever? Well, they didn't even adhere to the first standard, which was don't have slaves among your brethren. And so why would God, number one, why wouldn't the people obey? because we have sinful hearts. But number two is, why would God allow that rule? Well, I was mentioning divorce before, and in Matthew 19, God speaks to that. So this is when Jesus is being questioned about, hey, why was, why was divorce permitted in the Old Testament? And Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, and marries another woman, commits adultery. Now, I don't want to play fast and loose with scripture here, but this seems to make sense where why would God permit slavery? Because people's hearts were hard. If they didn't even obey the standard that God set, how are they going to measure up to God's perfect standard? So God gave them rules that they could hopefully adopt at that time, and for a good chunk of the time, they did, but they still rebelled against that. But God's standard has always been higher. So I think that's something that's worth noting, really. And my prayer for you is that 
You don't rush to, again, jump on your high horse and have pride when you look at this stuff and say, oh, we know slavery is wrong. Absolutely. And God knows that infinitely more than we do. But we're just figuring this out now in the 20th century. But for all of human history, there have been slaves all throughout the world. So it's very easy for us to make that proclamation today and say, oh, we know slavery is wrong. But if you lived 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, that was pretty much the norm. But that doesn't mean it was God's standard. Anyway, know that I love you and I'm praying for you. For anyone else that's joining, as always, I appreciate you so, so much. And I'll plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.